well good afternoon to y'all so today we're gonna start on a couple new builds here it's time for me to get back in that groove I'm trying to balance all the different all the different things I got going on over here between the repairs and whatnot I, man I <laughs> Speaking of the repairs, I started in, I got RO number one. Now, RO number two, three, four, and five, or two and three, I'm going to have to do something a little different with. They're going to be complete rebuilds after looking at what got delivered here by the FedEx man. So we're going to have to circle back to those. But I'm currently working on ROs four and five, I do believe. But today, I've got to get these knocked out, these couple amps here. So, this is, I'm going to build all three of these at the same time. But this is the last time you're going to see them all together on the table together. We're going to go and we're going to get all the transistors put down for both of these boxes, all three of these boxes. This one here that I'm putting, the, this one is for my friend, Mr. E. He's been waiting a long time for this box, so I'm gonna get it banged out with these other two. I've had a hell of a time getting cabinets and boards and sinks, but that's all part of the game. It's just part of the game. This one here is for my friend, Mr. T, who I've had for a long time. He sent me up a bag of Toshibas. He saw a post from two years ago of an amp that I built. Um, I think I called it the Godzilla 2x8 or 2x4. Well, I built it and then I loaned it to my business partner who's since gone on to God. Well, this post, somebody was going back through some old shit on Facebook and they, uh, they found a picture of the inside of this amp and they liked it and they brought it to the forefront of everybody in the group. And so he's like, oh, how much for that? And I'm like, dude, I don't want to sell it. But I'll build you one like it, but with all the fancy shit in it I do today. As you go through your building arc of learning what you're doing, I mean, you build to the best of your ability every single time. Okay? I look at the stuff as in like you guys are going to see with RO number four and RO number five. There's stuff that are going on inside that box I would never do today, because we've learned more. We've grown more, we've learned more. But these amps take forever for me to put them together. What people don't realize, or what some don't realize, some of you guys know this, because some of you guys have been following along for a long time, that I measure every part, and I put everything together with less than a 1% tolerance. I try. I try to maintain a 1% or lower tolerance on what I'm doing with the components. And that takes forever. Each one of those components need to be measured. I try to keep the wires all exactly the same length. I try to build to the best that I can each time. Right? That's just what we're supposed to do as builders. Although I do feel that some people that are in this business, they have a way of doing things and they just kind of slime line it and get it done. So like me, I take every heat sink that I get and I polish it because I believe in starting out with a good base. We're going to get the heat sink as clean as we can so we can marry up the transistor as best that we can to the heat sink, which is really vital to the overall life and operation of the amplifier. Well, when I built this amplifier, that the first one of these, this style, I used a 2x6 board and sink combo. It gave me more room inside the cabinet because I wanted to add a bunch of caps. That was back when I was adding a bunch of electrolytic capacitors to the circuit. That was back before we had LTOs and we had super capacitors and whatnot. I would not build like this today because the caps aren't really all that necessary as long as you have an adequate electrical system to drive the device. But he wants it in this style. So I'm going to build it all out. You're going to see stuff show up inside this cabinet that normally I don't put in things. This is a regular master class build built with a 2x4 two by, two by board. This is a 2x6. We're going to build a 2x4 here. 
And then over here, we're going to build a 2x8. I dig this. For a lot of years, we enjoyed the luxury of being able to have like unfettered access to components. Well, that changed a couple years ago with that whole, you know, thing that went down. I can't even say the word on YouTube anymore without it causing monetization issues. So we're just going to call, can, you know, call it the worldwide incident. We had a little worldwide incident that took place. Well, we can't get the heat sink like what we used to. So what our friends over at ICA have come up with is a brilliant workaround. Two pieces of heat sink that are smaller, but it allows us to have access to two by eight cabinets. If we did not adopt the split piece of sink, we wouldn't be able to have this because we can't get that wide stock anymore. This stock and this stock is still somewhat available, but this width, for the most part, and the quantity that we're trying to buy it in is not. So this is a brilliant workaround that uh, my friend Tony over at ICA has come up with. It works wonderfully. There's enough metal underneath the transistor. I mean, you think about it, we're going to put four transistors on this little piece of heat sink and six transistors on this piece of heat sink. There's more than enough metal mass here to do the job. So this one is just a straight out two by eight biased because this gentleman happens to be um, from the deep south, let's just say, and he utilizes um, sideband a lot more than the rest of us do. So we're gonna of course give him the external auto key circuit. We're gonna give him a really good sideband delay. This thing here, this guy does not care anything about uh, sideband at all. This is straight class C whoop ass that we're gonna build here for him. And this one's a master class build. It does not have a home yet. But gentlemen, I say welcome and follow along. I'm gonna break these out into three individual videos. So this is the intro for all three. As we slowly work our way through the process of building these three amps. This would normally be in a normal shop, probably one day, maybe a day and a half worth of work. Here, because of the way I build, and all the wires have to be the same length and everything's got to be this is like three days worth of work for me friday night we're going to get this started i'm going to get the boards down and get the transistors on everything the reason we want to put down the thermal compound then put the board on top and then put the transistors down is i don't want any schmoo to get in these pill pockets i want the transistors and the heat sink surface to have the cleanest most possible mating surface that we can achieve once i get the transistors down then we can take a break Go get some sleep, and then in the morning, we'll actually start assembling, assembling these. So on that note, let's move forward. Gentlemen, I appreciate you all tuning in, and I want you to recognize that these people right here on Patreon are the ones that have made it possible for all of you guys to enjoy probably 20, 30 minute video here, probably 30, 40 minute video here, probably about an hour worth of video here. All of these videos that you're going to see with these three cabinets have been brought to you ad-free by these people here, which are made up of a group of you all that watch and learn. The Patreons are the shit, and I give thanks for them every day. Just like I also give thanks for ICA. I don't know if you realize this or not, if it wasn't for ICA manufacturing, there would be a large hole in the radio community as a, as a whole. And we should all give thanks that nothing's happened with Tony this week. He's in good health and they're still in business and they're still willing to provide us all products so all of us can look like rock stars on the internet as we build our boxes. Just saying, food for thought. Gentlemen, let's play. Okay, so now we're on to the master class build. Like I was just saying in the other video, using this driver saves my wrists. And we actually do the snugging up process after we get the after we get the screws started. This is the weakest driver that Ryobi makes, and I'm using technically the wrong size drill bit because if the screw starts to torque up even in the least, it knocks the bit right up out of the screw. And our whole goal is to keep from us popping the top of the screw off 
So the goal of the masterclass build is to build the best thing that I can possibly, possibly, possibly build with the parts one that are available and two the knowledge that's in between my ears. So this is going to get the whole kitchen sink thrown at it, right? That's our goal. The problem is, is every day I turn around, the price on this shit's going up. The price on the wire has gone up dramatically. It's gone from like 25 cents a foot to a dollar a foot. If you try to buy it at any big bulk, it's around a dollar to a dollar ten a foot. So everything's gone up. The cost of solder's gone up. The cost of resistors have gone up. The cost of good capacitors have gone up. The cost of metal clads have gone up. But the only thing that hasn't been adjusted yet is the board and the sink combo pack, which I'm pretty sure is coming really soon. So unfortunately, we got a, as the date of the filming of this, it's going to cost a little bit more, but it's still getting made, right? So here we are on the Masterclass 4 pill. Um, stuffing all the bells and whistles in it that we normally do. And moving along, we got the input and the output networks done. We got our power wire done. We've got our high temp silicone wire that we're using on our uh, power distribution bus. And uh, next step is to do the input transformers, get them wound up get our input splitter network put in place, get our output combiner put together, get the relay down, and start drilling holes in it for the sideband, relay, on off, delay, and remote. Yay. So anyhow, away we go. So this masterclass build is at the point where I'm ready to put it into a cabinet. Got all the wires run all the stuff underneath the board. All cleaned up, ready to rock and roll. Rock and roll, rock and roll. So, I might add a little bit more bling to this, but I know that this is gonna work. Titties. They're pretty good at building these, so. Of course, they've all got the Japanese relays in them. They've got all legit Omron relays, that kind of stuff, so. Let's go populate up the cabinet and let's drop this board in there and let's get on with it, I say. Well, this is done. Bias is added. Input, output, combiner, co co uh, capacitance is all added. On off, sideband relay, coax connectors, remotes all tied in, output tuning networks all installed. The only thing that's missing is some vinyl on the front, some power wires out the back and some vinyl on the back, a fan, a lid, and a fan guard. So we're gonna set this puppy aside. I've gotta go wrap up these other two boxes and get them to this same position. But the master class is 90% done, boys and girls. If you guys had any clue how long it takes for me to put one of these together, you'd be a little bit more empathetic. This is... a lot of work, a lot of measuring, so much time. Oh well, worth it. Okay, well, it's all in one piece, everything's hooked up. We're sitting here playing with it, so let's get a performance report for you guys. Over here is our 1,000 watt slug and peak, our 1,000 watt slug and average, and our 5 watt slug and reverse back from the bird 10,000 watt dummy load. So we're on the D rail 955 striker, we're on 15 volts flat. 14.99 anyhow. At oh one two. So we're seeing about 120 something watts, give or take. Let's go ahead and let's fire the amp up, turn the box on. At oh 100 watt carrier, no problem. At oh audio. 950 to 990. 
Now, let's engage our sideband delay. Let's back this out a little bit. Back this out some more. Here we go. Okay, sideband delay enacted. We're gonna go to lower sideband. Audio, one, two, one, two, audio. But 900 on the peak meter and 800 on the average. And that's with the striker hitting it. Just saying. Hello, audio, one, two, audio, one, two. Everything's happy. Let's go back to AM. We'll turn the delay off. Let's go up here. First, we'll look at this. Hello, 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 hello. No, I come up here and look at the bird. Hello, 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 audio. Hello, audio. Hello, audio. 900 watts. Okay. Well, the only thing I got left to do to finish this up, clear it, mount the fan, and uh, put vinyl on it. I'm happy. Another masterclass build ready to go out into the world for somebody to play with. I couldn't help myself. I had to try this. So we hooked up the Striker 490. You did. Hooked up the Striker 490. There we go. We're on a 1000 watt scale. Hello, audio. Hello, audio. About 180 ish watts. Let's turn the amp on. Oh, we'll go to the 2x scale. So now full deflection. And I keep saying full deflection. Full meter movement over here to the right. When we get over here, it's 2,000 watts. So right here in the middle, right between the 40 and the 60, is 1,000. And that next big hash mark is 12. So about 20 or 30 more watts of drive. These are the results. But oh, audio. Hello. 11, some change. So, yeah, this thing's working perfect. It's good for everything from a 30 watt radio all the way to a 200 plus watt radio, so like 220 watt radio. Okay, let's get this finished up. Well, here we are at the end of the story. Click, 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 click done. Master class build, or master builder class number 43. It's got every bell and whistle in it. It's got the best components money can buy in it. The reason that everybody's so excited about these boxes is because I don't cheap out. I use good wire, I use good connectors, I don't use Alibaba capacitors, I make my own transformers, I control the quality of everything. Teflon on all the wires, high dollar fans, custom fan guards, hand polish the board, the heat sink on up. I wish that could be said about everybody that's in this business, but it can't be. It is what it is. Thank you everybody for tuning in and following along what's going on with the channel over here and watching this video. Um, <clears throat> there's a price hike coming. And it's because the cost of wire, Teflon, has gone up now in the last 60 days. It went from 85 cents a foot to $1.50 a foot to $2 a foot. Don't base your numbers that you're seeing on IC manufacturing as like bulk prices or availability prices. Those are getting ready to change as well. Fan price has gone up. Board heat sink combo box, everything's good. it's all getting ready to go up. So we're at 875 on this. So we went up $25. Even the price of the Anderson clips is going up. The price of solder is going up. So anyhow, the first one to give me a call at this number here. Wow. This is the first one that gets it. I'm gonna of course offer it up to my friends in the Patreon group first. These guys right here. But then it's coming on to the rest of the universe. It wouldn't surprise me if somebody on Patreon ends up picking it up first. But it is what it is. 
gentlemen, I gotta give a big shout out to XS, Siglent, Beckman, Bird, Coaxial Dynamics, our friends over at Penta Labs. I wanna say thanks. Thanks for tuning in, following along, watching what we've got going on over here. This needs to go to a new home. It's set up to be driven by a striker, like 955, 655, that kind of thing, or a 490, or a 497. Appreciate you guys. I mean that honestly, from the bottom of my heart. I'll see ya. Click, click.